and welcome to another episode of Fubar. In today's episode, we are going to make a map application using Amplify and the new location service from AWS. If you want to know more about serverless cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post videos every week. So let's get started. <laughs> During reInvent 2020, at the end on Werner's keynote, one of the most, I would say, random <laughs> services was announced. I was really not expecting this one. That was the Amazon Location Service. Amazon Location Service is a service that lets you handle a lot of localization things of an application, like maps, search indexes, um, geofencing, uh, you can add trackers and know if those different trackers have get in and out of the fences. So basically, this is a set of, of, of services that are provided by AWS, so you can use in your applications to add map functionality. Because until now, if you wanted to add map functionality, you either needed to do it yourself, code it yourself, or bring some third-party API into your application. Maybe you will need to get another authentication mechanism or things like that. So it will add it a lot of complexity. In this way, everything will work with the existing authentication methods and everything will be behind the uh, IAM permissions that we are very familiar. Location service uh, provides maps and different tools that are not provided by AWS, they're provided by other map providers like S3 and here, and I imagine in the future new providers will come. So you are not, it's not like AWS launched a map platform. No, 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 they are just getting the maps from there. But uh, it's kind of making it easier for you to consume those maps with uh, known SDKs and APIs like we are going to see in this video. I want to show you how this location services is integrated with uh, authentication, uh, like Cognito, we will see it later. We will see how it's integrated with Amplify. We will see, uh, we will not see it in this video, but you can go and check it out how CloudWatch uh, works and CloudTrail as well for all the accesses to the API. Also location service provides um, connection with event bridge. When you're using the trackers and the geofencing, there is a event driven uh, system going on there. So if you want to know more, I recommend you to check that out. If you want me to make a video and there is a lot of interest about that, I can show you a tutorial on geofencing and tracking. In this particular video, we will be talking about these other two features that are maps and search. So in this demo, I want to show you how you can create like a Google Maps application, a very ugly one, because, you know, I'm not a front-end developer, but we will have a map. We will put, uh, display the map in what we want. And then we will have a little search bar that we can search for places in the world. And the map will update according to that. And all that using Amplify and the location service. So let's go to the code and see how this is done. In order to do this demo, you need to have an AWS account, you need to have Amplify installed and have access to the location service. So the first thing we are going to do is to create an empty React project because we want to have an application to work with. I will use create React app as always. I always end up doing that and I will name my uh, project Amazon location service maps. Put the name you like. And that will download the whole internet in your computer and I will speed up until we are done. <laughs> so now we just get in and open this in uh, Visual Studio Code and we are ready to start working with Amplify. So the first thing I want to do is uh, in the terminal inside this directory is to install a couple of the dependencies that we are needing, the AWS SDK and AWS Amplify. So I'm installing those dependencies because we are going to call them later when we are working with our application. So again, after all the internet downloads into my computer, I will see you because this takes forever. So now we're done and now we can run Amplify in it. If you don't have a clue what is this Amplify and what is Amplify in it, I leave you in the description box a playlist where you can go and learn about Amplify and what it means to Amplify in it and all that stuff. But for now, you can follow the steps 
it's not a big deal, but this is just initializing all the resources that you will need in the cloud for using uh, for this uh, cloud native application that we are building. Amplify init will prompt us with some uh, defaults. We will go through all the defaults. I just use the name for my project. I put maps. I didn't left the default because it's too long. But the rest, I will go through the defaults because that's just asking about our type of project, the language, the framework, and blah, blah, blah. Then I will uh, tell what is my AWS profile. You have to have an AWS profile to use this, or you can try the admin UI that I talk in another video. But to follow this demo, like I'm doing, have an AWS profile configure, and this will take a little while while it's initialized the project in the cloud. Basically, it creates a couple of buckets, a couple of roles, and everything that it needs to get you started. So after this is done, the next thing we are going to do is to add authentication, and we are not adding authentication to our projects in the sense that people will need to use uh, username and password. We just want to have this Cognito pool in there, so basically we can then attach a policy to this role that uh, Cognito will generate for us for all the guests so they can basically see the maps. So it's just a security protocol and I will walk you through it. So now uh, we will add the authentication. So I will say uh, amplify add auth and it asks what kind of configuration. I will go through the default, the username, password. I don't care because we are not going to use that. And the next thing we are going to do is amplify push to push all these changes that we just created in uh, locally, like defining the authentication is not in the cloud yet, into the cloud. So amplify push will push everything into the cloud. This takes a while, so I will speed this up until it's done. So now that this is completed, we want to do one thing. That is give the unauthenticated users or the guests of our applications permissions to uh, get access to all these location services. So what we are going to do, we are going to use this command amplify console auth and that will take us directly to the console part of our application so we don't need to search and that's pretty neat because finding the right user pool or identity pool if you have many can be very painful. So I will click identity pool because that's what we want to open and that will take us directly if you're logged in in your AWS management console, that will take us directly to the right identity pool. Identity pools are basically um, the part of Cognito that are giving, that is giving uh, temporary AWS credentials to the users. So basically when um, there is a user pools and identity pools. User pools are like directory of users and then uh, identity pools are like the permissions of the users. If you want to know more about Cognito and go a little bit in depth, I leave you a link in the description where we talk about uh, all these things with Sebastian and it was really nice video, so I will not go into the details now. But basically, identity pools will give permissions to authenticated users as well to guests. So we are going to edit the identity pools and we will allow to have guests in this application because for now there is no guest. So meaning that now all our um, guests will get a role when they are unauthenticated. And then we can start giving policies, meaning permissions to this role to access different AWS resources. So remember the name of your unauthenticated role because we will need it in a second because now we are going to IAM. IAM is the service that is in charge of managing all the access and authentication in AWS. In there, we are going to go into the roles. The roles are, um, you will have many. <laughs> so search, use the search and search for the name that you just remember from the authenticated. So I will use amplify maps and then I will look for the enough role. And then to this role, we will attach a policy. A policy is a document that has a lot of permissions. So I will attach an inline policy that I will use the JSON and I will just paste this document into this JSON. You can see here there is a lot of stars. Stars in policy are bad, but I give you the stars because this is an exercise. If you want to use this in production, you will need to give specific access to specific resources. 
So how you will do this, you will go and give the exact actions like get maps or list maps or whatever, and then to the exact resources that are the maps and the inch, uh, search indexes that we are going to create. For demo purposes, I'm using the star, but again, this is not the right way to do it. Um, so be careful on uh, if you are putting this out in the world, you are giving permission basically for everybody that is not authenticated to access all your things inside the Amazon location service. This is dangerous. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Let's go back. Now we have this uh, dangerous policy in place. So disclaimer again, we review it, we create it, we put a name and then that's already attached to our role. So whenever we have an unauthenticated guest, they will have permissions to do whatever in our location service. That's very handy and very dangerous. <laughs> so now let's go again to the Amazon console and open the location service. And this is the new service from AWS. Uh, and here you can create maps and search indexes and geofencing and tracking. So let's open uh, the sidebar and go to maps, but we will create a new map with another name. And I will put the name full bar, I don't know, maps. <laughs> and then we can choose what kind of map we want. And this is just the style and who is the provider. Is this S3 or is it here? Uh, is it light gray? Is it like, I don't know, typical map or it's dark? You pick the one you like. They're more or less all the same. And here I just pick one and then voila, we are ready. <laughs> so that's our map. Now we can go to the code and start coding. I will be doing everything in the app.js because, you know, I'm not a front-end developer and I'm lazy. So I will start this application in the browser so we can see the results right away when everything is done. And then we can start working on the app.js. So we have uh, in source app.js and there we have our application. The first thing we need to do is to import like a million things. I will import React and use state and use effect so I can use them for my application. Then I will import two things the React Map GL and the Mapbox GL. These are libraries that will help me to draw my map in the screen. One thing is that these libraries with the newest version, they don't work with the location map service. So you need to use older versions. Yeah. So I will go to my package JSON and I will do um, add these libraries with the right versions, the right versions that work with the location service. And then I will run npm install. So I make sure the right versions get into my project. This is very important because if you just run npm install with the names of these things, they will bring the latest version and you will see that this doesn't work. But you can draw these maps with many other libraries. So I just use this one because I just use this one, but there are many others. So you can go and explore how to draw your maps. If you are using iOS or Android, then there is also uh, things there that you can draw maps with. So this is just the library that I found. The next thing I'm going to import is all the amplify things that we need now. So we have the amplify, we have some kind of signer, we have the AWS exports, that is where all our parameters, secret parameters from our application is stored. Uh, then we have the Amplify configure to configure our installation from Amplify. And then we have a constant with the name of our map and we need to put it in that constant because we will use it later on. So now we are ready to add uh, our first function that is the transform request function. This is a function that the map will use to um, sign all the uh, URLs correctly with the right credentials that Amplify provides. So this is something I found in the documentation of um, the location service. I will put it in the description box. So just copy paste it and it's kind of what it is. So it works pretty well, but basically it grabs that URL and it signs it with the credentials. So then um, AWS can do something and everything is good. And now I'm going to replace the whole function app with my new 
uh, app function. So with my new component, this component has a couple of uh, parameters. The first one is the credentials. These are the credentials that are coming from Amplify. So I'm using the auth library from Amplify to get the credentials of the user that is just registered. Well, that is signed on. In this case, is this guest user that has this role uh, with permissions to access the uh, geo. And then we have this viewport. The viewport is an interesting one. It's just the longitude, latitude, and zoom that we are going to provide to our map. In this case, it's somewhere in the middle of the United States. You put the longitude and latitude that you like. You zoom as much as you like. And then we have the um, kind of website itself. The first thing that we'll do is load the credentials. After the credentials are loaded, then we will draw them up because we need the credentials in order to draw them up. And then we are calling that React Map GL component with the viewport and then the transform request that is signing um, this URL with the right credentials, the map with name, and then uh, if we want to change the viewport because we want to put a different place in the map and we don't want to rewrite the whole page, then this is the method that we need to pass. So this is very simple and now we should save and reload our page and we will see that uh, the map is kind of loaded in Vancouver. I thought it was in the States, but no, it's Canada. So yeah, that's kind of what we got. We don't have a search bar here, but now we have a map. So if we change the lo longitude and latitude, then we will see that we will end up in different places. That's good. <laughs> I don't know where we are going to end up with those longitude and latitude, middle of nowhere. Good. So no idea what is that, if that's the States or Canada or whatever. Let's go back to the location services and create a search index for places. So we are going to place indexes and we create a new place index and we put a name again, foobar uh, place index. And we have two types, the ones from S3 and the ones from here. They both have different features, but for us, they're the same. But if you need something in particular, I recommend you to go and learn what are the different features that these ones allow you. Then it asks you if you want to store the results and we'll say no, and we will save. And then we need the name of the index in a moment and we have the error in there if you need to fix your uh, unauthenticated role policy, that's the one. <laughs> so. Let's go and add a couple more things in our import. The first one is the location, and this is using the AWS SDK that we imported at the beginning. This is the location client that will help us to do the search. And then we will add a new component here that is the uh, search component. And this is basically the little search box that I just created a small component. I could put it in a different page, but again, you know, I'm lazy. So this search component will have a couple of attributes In this first one is the place. And then it has a couple of methods uh, to try to collect all the inputs whenever somebody types something and whenever somebody clicks. And then we have the input box and the button. So whenever somebody types something, then um, we will send that to ch handle change. And whenever somebody click, we will um, search for a particular place. And the search method is coming in the props, so it's in the parent uh, component that in our case is the app. So we will add that in a second. But before um, adding that, we need to create the client attribute in our application. The client attribute is a client for the location service. So we need to create that and you will see that uh, the create client basically requires the credentials from uh, Amplify that we are getting. And then it will create a new client in the right region with the right credentials. And then we can use that client to search and all kinds of things using the SDK. So now with that, then we can basically uh, add the search method in our uh, application component. And this search place, we give the place like Helsinki. And then it used the uh, index name, in this case, foobar place, we need to replace it with uh, and the text and pass that to the client that we just created in the method search place index for text and it returns some data. Here we are getting an array of results and I'm just fetching the first one. So imagine you put 
mm, I don't know, Springfield. <laughs> there are many Springfield in the United States. So basically, you are going to reload your map, map in the first result. If you want to show all the results, you will need to create a view and display this and allow the user to click like Google Maps does. But this is a poor map, Google Maps. And then with that, we are going to get the longitude and latitude for each of the results. And we are setting the viewport of our map with those. And that's kind of it. Oh, well, we need to add the search in the, in the web page. So let's add that component in our application. And now we're done. <laughs> so let's refresh this and see how it looks. Now I refresh and you see in the bar there is Helsinki that is the default and I do search and bloof, Helsinki appears. Then I can do uh, Montevideo, that is my hometown and I search and Montevideo appears. Then I can do uh, Barcelona, that is one of my favorite cities in the world and bloop, it appears. Then I can search things that are more specific like the airport of uh, Paris, Charles de Gaulle, and uh, I don't know why I remember that airport, <laughs> but yeah, that appears. So you can see that it's searching. If you search things that are like Springfield, you will get a random one. I don't know how uh, it decides which one is the first result, but yeah, be careful of that. So yeah, we're done. Don't forget if you're using this in production to uh, change your authorized, unauthorized role to be very, uh, like to give the permissions exactly to who you need and where you need. So that's the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. Let me know what kind of other services you like me to cover. The code is in the description box as always. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this demo. This was a very fun thing to build because there was nothing out there of this thing yet. So I was having a lot of fun. I see you in the next episode of Wool Bar. Ciao, ciao.